Thich Nhat Hanh, who wrote uh, The Miracle of Mindfulness. I have here a quote that I would like to, uh, a few quotes actually, that I'd like to uh, repeat that he said, um, he's written, I think over like a hundred books. If you're interested in this idea of mindfulness, he probably has one of the simplest ways of teaching uh, the philosophy of mindfulness. He's really, an, he, well, he, uh, he, he passed away recently, January 22nd. He was 95 years old. He suffered a stroke, I believe, maybe five years ago or so. Uh, when you touch one thing with deep awareness, you touch everything. You touch everything. When you touch one thing with deep awareness, you touch everything. And to me, the practice of mindfulness helps us cultivate that deep awareness. Right? It helps us cultivate that ability to be in the state of pure awareness, let's say, and not be identified with thoughts or emotions or sensations. And that when we touch something, when we come into contact with the present moment from that state of deep awareness, we're really coming into contact with everything. We're coming into contact with everything. Uh, the UCLA has a mindfulness program as well. At the, a lot of mindfulness programs are sending out um, emails uh, about, you know, um, acknowledging him. And so I'm reading you a few of the things that I get. Uh, with mindfulness, you can establish yourself in the present in order to touch the word, touch the wonders of life that are available in this moment. When you are mindful, you are fully alive. You are fully present. You can get in touch with the wonders of life that can nourish you and heal you. And you are stronger. You are more solid in order to handle the suffering inside of you and around you. When you are mindful, you can recognize, embrace, and handle the pain, the sorrow in you and around you to bring you relief. And if you continue with concentration and insight, you'll be able to transform the suffering inside and help transform the suffering around you. So really mindfulness is about this cultivating the present moment, being aware of the present moment. In that cultivation, we continue the practice of focusing on what? On the present moment, what is unfolding. With that emerges insight. With insight then, we have a greater ability to participate in the world. We're less reactionary and more responding to situations. And that comes from a practice, something that we can actually cultivate inside. Just like, for instance, if you wanted to uh, plant a garden, you go out, you choose which seeds you want to plant, and you put them in the soil, and you have the soil that is nurturing, and you water it and you take care of this garden that you're going to start and our thoughts and emotions are just like the garden we choose the thoughts the emotions which ones we choose to nurture which ones we choose not to which ones we choose to attach onto uh etc cetera, etc cetera. and so he wrote this right so his and, 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 and I may have said this in the past, but one of the things that I really love about his books is that they were so simple. He used everything. He used nature. He used relationships. He used washing dishes. Um, he used walking meditation. I think I told the story of, you know, here I am reading the book and next thing I know, I'm walking differently out of the bus as I'm taking the bus to, to, uh, to UCLA as an undergrad. Just by reading a paragraph in this book, all of a sudden I'm walking differently. My ability to go up and down stairs is different because I'm paying attention. It's the first time that I started paying attention to my movements. And we'll do a practice today that I really love. I really love this practice and sharing this with you today uh, because it's common in, in um, it's, 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 it's a fairly common practice. Uh, and, uh, and I'm excited to be sharing this with you. But here's what he said. 
Um, somebody asked him about a leaf. And we've done, if you've been here for years with me, you know that we've gone into the elements, the elements of the human body, right? Really asking the question who, who, who we are. Um, and that's a meditation in and of itself is just sort of asking a question, who, who am I? Who am I? And bringing it down to the elemental, right? What are you? Physically, chemically, whatever it might be. So he goes into this dialogue about a leaf, a leaf that comes from a tree, right? I asked the leaf whether it was frightened because it was autumn and the other leaves were falling. The leaf told me. So here he is. He's having a conversation with the leaf. No. During the whole spring and summer, I was completely alive. I worked hard to help nourish the tree. And now much of me is in the tree. I'm not limited by this form. I am also the whole tree. And when I go back to the soil, I will continue to nourish the tree. So I don't worry at all. As I leave this branch and float to the ground, I will wave to the tree and tell her, I will see you again very soon. That day there was a wind blowing and after a while I saw the leaf leave the branch and float down to the soil, dancing joyfully. I was so happy, I bowed my head knowing that I have a lot to learn from the leaf. <laughs> so please look, and you will see that you have always been here. Let us look together and penetrate into the life of a leaf. So we may be one with the leaf. Let us penetrate and be one with everything to realize our own nature and be free from fear. If we look very deeply, we will transcend birth and death. Tomorrow I will continue to be, but you will have to be very attentive to see me. I will be a flower or a leaf. I will be in these forms and I will say hello to you. If you are attentive enough, you will recognize me and you may, be, may greet me. I will be very happy. So that's his teachings from a leaf. <laughs> Which you really can't get more simple than that. So one of the things uh, I know some people have asked about addiction. Mindfulness can help with addiction. There's a lot of uh, mindfulness based like relapse prevention programs, mindfulness based eating disorder programs and stuff like that. And uh, one of the aspects, this is a big topic, right? So it might be difficult to do in 40 minutes or whatever it might be, but it's an important one. Using mindfulness. Mindfulness can be a tool that we can use. And addiction and can be any, uh, any urge or desire that becomes so overwhelming that we feel as if we don't have any control over it. Almost like a self compulsory process that is occurring. All right. Now, initially, just like with anything, we don't expect a dramatic change. But what we start doing is we start using the principles of mindfulness. And, 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 and this is a really fascinating sort of entryway into mindfulness as if we could start shining a flashlight like we have a beam that beam is our attention where we choose to place our attention is like a flashlight all right coming out of a source and that source is let's say pure consciousness and here's my beam and i choose where I direct this beam. Now, what does the world try to do? Well, you know, if you're in advertising, what are you trying to do? You're trying to grab people's attention. You're trying to pull people's attention away. All right, so here you go. You're walking down the street or you're listening to the news or you're on Facebook or whatever it might be and they throw in all these ads and here's your attention. Your attention is looking at all your friends and then all of a sudden an ad comes up, right? And they know exactly what you're going to pay attention to. And all of a sudden you go, oh, that looks interesting. Let me click on that. All right. So now they've just grabbed your attention. Right. So there is there is an attention uh, grabbing business out there. All right. So we can 
uh, shine. So you choose. First of all, you need to know that you can choose where to place your attention. Yes, there are things externally that will try to grab our attention, but you have the ability to focus. Okay. Now, when we know this, now we have the ability to then change, focus our attention. And with urges, with compulsory actions that we feel as if we they have control over us, and this doesn't have to be, you know, what we think of like opioid addiction or cocaine addiction. This can be simply like, you know, I need my, I, I, I eat a lot of sweets or I eat a lot of chips or uh, I have an addiction to um, uh, gambling um, or I have an addiction to work, right? Work can be an addiction. Things that we might even think are, are sort of good from a societal perspective can be an addiction. When there's a compulsory feeling inside that we feel as if we don't have any control over. Okay. And what mindfulness, how we can actually start to tackle this with mindfulness is initially, we don't tackle the biggest elephant in the room, right? Let's say we, uh, we smoke cigarettes or we drink a lot of alcohol or whatever it might be, or we eat compulsory and we're gaining a lot of weight. We eat, we can't really control what we're eating. It's not necessarily that with the mindfulness, you're going to start to tackle that big elephant, right? The worst urges that you have. In the practice, we start with really small urges. Okay. And you will notice really small urges as soon as you start to sit quietly. Okay. And the fun practice of this, and, and I would highly recommend you sort of chuckle about this because it, it, it should be funny, is that we simply bring our attention. We sort of, we try to sit and relax and we just pay attention to the present moment and we notice, we notice what urges arise. Do you have the urge to itch? Do you have the urge to check your phone for a text message? Do you have the urge to get up? Do you have the urge to turn me off because you don't like my voice? Whatever it is as an urge that you actually become aware of the sensory, what you feel in the body as a sensation that creates the urge in the brain. Okay. When I, when I lead a lot of groups, it's interesting. I start my meditation and everyone starts their meditation and within a minute or so they're itching their shoulders or they're moving their, or, you know, it's like within two minutes within the meditation, they need to uh, get a, get, get a drink of water. And I always find that to be very fascinating. It's like, oh, all of a sudden that urge just arose and you felt as if you couldn't do anything else except for get up and get a drink of water when we were two minutes into our meditation. It's not like the meditation is going to be four hours and you're not going to be able to get water, but an urge arose and we felt as if we had to act on it, even if it's just drinking water. Okay. And so the practice that we're going to do today, which I think is actually a really funny practice. It's a good practice. And you'll notice kind of your own innuendos. You'll, you'll notice your own idiosyncrasies about how you move, what you notice. Do you have a strong desire, even if I'm guiding you in a meditation, to check to see if you have got any text messages, emails? Right? Maybe you're missing, you know, the final version, the final of Price is Right or something like that. I don't know. Right? And, 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 and a really good practice of this is if you have an itch. If you have an itch, you notice the sensation of the itch that's arising. 
And while the sensation of the itch is arising, you can actually pay attention to what that feels like. What's the sensation of that itch? And notice the sensation purely as sensation without scratching the itch. So it's like, oh, I notice there's a little itch on my forearm. How large is it? How small is it? And what we start doing is we start taking our, this flashlight and we become hyper curious, hyper curious. You bring curiosity to your urge. You bring curiosity to your urge. Oh, almost as if you've never experienced this urge before and you're just investigating it as if you were the number one investigative reporter and you need to write a 500 page article on this itch. So you bring a sense of hyper curiosity to the sensation in the body that arose that gave your mind. Oh, I need to, I got a scratch. Oh, what is that? So you take your attention and you actually go to that area without itching without making your movement, without scratching your nose, without getting your drink of water, right? What are you noticing in your body as a sensation that's making you say, I got to get that drink of water right now? Okay, because that's heightened a thousandfold for, let's say, sugar or alcohol or cigarettes or gambling or work, or whatever it might be. So we practice on the urges that we think are sort of like, uh, they don't really affect me so much, like an itch. But yet it's the same concept of bringing this hyper curiosity as if you could put it under a microscope and look at it at a thousand X magnification. You're like, oh, what is that? With that curiosity, you also bring kindness and love and compassion for yourself, right? We don't beat ourselves up. We don't judge ourselves for being bad because I'm going to eat the gummy bears or whatever it might be or have that cigarette, okay? We bring kindness. Oh, let me take a look at this urge. Wow, this is a really fascinating my daughter is two and a half months now, and she's, she's discovering her hands. And we put her down, and this is what she starts doing. She starts looking at her, she starts trying to figure out what her hands are, right? It's the most, I mean, it's the most, it's the, it's, it's the most incredible thing in the world, right? What are these things? If you touch them, you could sort of do interesting Right? We try to put things that she grabs, but it's more of a reflex. She sort of holds on to fingers more reflexively than anything. But we're, we're, we're exposing her to like different textures, soft, hard. She's discovering her hands. She doesn't, she doesn't know what these are yet. That's the type of curiosity that you bring to a sensation of an urge in your body. How did it come up? Where did it come from? What all of a sudden caused this sensation to appear? Whatever it is. Okay, what's the sensation? So we're going into what's the sensation, feeling the urge. And I remember when I was, uh, I believe I must have been um, seven, eight, or nine. And uh, I, had, um, I had poison oak on my body and that was itchy and i realized that if i itched it made the itch worse i was a little kid and it was horrible horrible and that was the first time that i asked myself i asked myself i said well the sense the itch is just a sensation that my arm is telling my brain to like scratch 
So what if I try to scratch the itch without moving? What if I try to tell my brain that it's okay to have that sensation of whatever it might be, but I don't actually have to itch. I don't have to act, right? And it was fascinating, fascinating. It was like the intensity of the itch, the intensity of the sensation of the desire, of the urge to itch. It like grew like a volcano. It was like, it was like burbling up, right? That sensation was burbling up, coming up. It was increasing, 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 increasing. And I almost felt like I couldn't handle it anymore. I was like, and, and literally it was like, I was like, nope, not going to do it. I put my hand behind my back. I was like, I'm not going to do it. I put my hand behind my back. And I was just paying attention to the sensation of this, the itch. And then it dissipated. It like spread out. It went from a very, very intense point almost like a a a hot 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 coal on my arm and by just simply bringing curiosity to it that sensation dissipated it like eased and the desire to itch that urge was lessened and when they do studies they've actually done quite a bit of studies on this looking at brain regions areas of the brain where, for instance, uh, when there's an urge that arises, those areas of the brain of reaction areas, uh, co uh, compulsory areas of the brain are activated. And when we practice mindfulness, that in real time, we can actually decrease the activation of those regions in the brain in real time. I was bringing attention. I was focusing on this thing as a sensation. And it grew, it grew, it grew, it grew, it grew. And then as I was just bringing hyper curiosity to it, it got to the point where it felt like it was a volcano that was going to erupt and then it dissipated. So you might feel like the urge increases. And what you do is you just continue to bring curiosity to it with kindness and compassion and no self judgment. And you see what happens and you see what happens and you practice with things that don't aren't a big deal right you practice with things like an itch or a desire to stand up or a desire to turn me off or a desire to check your text messages but you notice that urge as a body sensation okay which can be pretty uh pretty um pretty phenomenal. Now, uh, the point of this is that you don't resist it. Uh, I'm not trying to make my itch go away. Although I, it's a very unpleasant experience. It wasn't like I was trying to, I was actually bringing curiosity to the sensation that was causing my mind to say, it's this darn thing. Okay. And so I'm not resisting it, I'm not resisting it. I'm simply bringing curiosity to it as if you had a floodlight, floodlight right to the area and be curious about it. Okay. All right. So this is actually designed uh, by the mindfulness by John Kabat-Zinn. Um, it's called Urge Surfing urge surfing okay because we all have urges and it's not about resisting them it's about going with the wave right what does a what does a surfer do it gets on the wave hey let me ride this wave right let me ride this urge but you're doing so mindfully with curiosity and it's not just a reaction to the urge of, oh, I just saw those potato chips. Let me go and grab that bag and eat the whole bag. 
or I'm just going to have a little bit of ice cream. And next thing you know, you finished the whole uh, box of ice cream or whatever we call them, carton. Okay. So we're going to go urge surfing, urge surfing. And you can do this in a formal practice like we're going to do now. But you can also do this eh, at 9 p.m. at night when you're cruising through those cupboards and you're like, oh, what do I have the urge for? <laughs> what do I have the urge for? Oh, look at the, you know, look, I got jelly. Look, I'm with you guys, right? I got my jelly beans. I got my gummy bears. I got the ice cream. I got the potato chips, the Fritos, right? All different urges. What am I what am I going for? Right? What what am I looking for? Oh, there it is. Grab it, munch it, right? Whole bags of chips are gone. Okay. So you can do this in a formal practice, just like what we're gonna do now, where you sit and you notice the urges that arise. Or you can do this as an informal practice throughout your day. What's my urge right now? Oh, my urge is to get up and go home and see my wife, for instance. My urge is to eat lunch. What do you notice? Well, I'm noticing it feels as if there is um, like an uh, like an emptiness in my belly, like a hollowness in my belly. It feels like um, like it's tightening a little bit. And that's typically for me, maybe a sensation of being hungry. OK, and how is that? All right, so we're gonna go urge surfing for our practice today. It might help you for the weekend. If it doesn't, again, we go through a numerous, uh, you know, for people who have been with us for a while, we go through numerous practices. Some work for you, some don't. And some we, we come back to, and all of a sudden the second time we come back to them, you're like, oh, that didn't work the first time, but it definitely worked the second time. That's interesting. All right. All right, so let's start our practice here. Okay, so let's find a comfortable position. Let's find a position we feel relaxed, yet alert. Closing your eyes, if you feel comfortable closing your eyes. If not, having a soft downward gaze. As if you're looking off onto the horizon. And just taking a moment to have three deep breaths. And with each in breath, bringing in the present moment. And then breathing regularly. Just starting by bringing your attention to your feet. and the contact the feet are making with whatever surface they're on. And just seeing how you can direct your attention to your feet. And also noticing that you may have other thoughts and emotions come in And as thoughts come in, simply recognizing them. 
And for this moment, choosing not to pay too much attention to them and bring your attention back to your feet. That you have this capacity to notice what arises, but yet direct your attention consciously. And maybe now directing your attention to your back and your back making contact with the chair or couch or support surface you're on. Now we're going to begin our urge surfing. The purpose of this is to focus on the sensations in the body that are arising. These sensations may have a story associated with them. The sensation, for instance, that arises and the story to check your cell phone or to itch and itch. We're not trying to suppress anything. We're simply noticing with curiosity, with a kind curiosity, self-compassion, and non-judgmental nature. Seeing if we focus on the physical sensation of any urge that arises in this moment, Do you have an urge to move a body part, to itch, to scratch? You may notice the urge in one place or in several. You may do a brief scan of your body and just check in with places that are affected by cravings. Paying attention to the sensation as soon as you notice any urge that arises to move, even to become more comfortable, to change your position, to scratch your nose, to clear your throat, to move your feet. Notice the sensation that arises and bring an aspect of curiosity to that sensation. 
See if you can notice the urge without following through with it. Notice the physical sensation of the desire to move without moving. Bringing a sense of kind curiosity. If you were to read or write a five page essay on this urge, what is it? What does it feel like exactly? Where is it located? Is it tense, hot, cool, throbbing? tight, tingling, open. There are many possible sensations that you might feel. If it's helpful, you may name the sensation to yourself. Even name the urge. Wanting to move my hand. Silently name the urge to yourself. See what happens. Wanting to check my cell phone for text messages. Wanting to move my foot to be more comfortable. We're not trying to mentalize the urge. We're noticing the urge with curiosity as a sensation in the body. If you feel like the urge is too intense and you have to move, notice what the movement feels like. Is the urge gone after you move? Does another urge arise? And here we are, surfing our urges moment to moment, as we have the desire to change, noticing the urge as a physical sensation and coming back to the physical sensation of the urge. Noticing the story the urge has associated with it. And yet, stay with the physical sensation of the body. As you bring this curiosity does the wave of the urge rise? Does it stay steady or does it fall? Does it ebb and flow? Does it come and go? You may notice an urge in your shoulders to move in your arms or hands, in your legs or feet, in your belly or chest. As you notice an urge arise, simply paying attention to the physical sensation with curiosity with a sense of kindness, love, and self-compassion.
simply bringing attention to the physical sensation of urges as they arise, shining the flashlight of curiosity and noticing what happens. And as we bring this meditation to a close today, just realizing you can do this any time of the day, simply noticing the sensation of an urge that arises. And now bringing your attention back to your breath, Taking two or three deep breaths, opening your eyes if your eyes were closed, reorienting yourself to your room and surroundings, stretching if you feel like you need to stretch, and just taking a moment to reflect on your urge surfing practice.